Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL. And you can have mods or Magis modules or even exposed installed. And I'll be showing you how to update that phone to the February security update that was released actually almost a week ago, but I haven't gotten around time to doing it until now. So before we begin, you'll need to do a few things. Is that you must uninstall any substratum uh, overlays or themes. So to do that, you just go into your substratum app I'll just head over to that real quick and all you have to do is just uninstall every overlay you have so just go into your overlay manager select them all and then uninstall selected items you will need to uninstall every single one so this is just to make sure that you don't end up in a boot loop after now the best thing to do would be to reboot the phone just to ensure that they are fully gone Okay, so our phone's uh, restarted now, and then we can go ahead with the updating process. Well, in this case, you're going to need to download a couple of things. So first up, we'll need to go back to our computer here, and we'll need to download the SDK platform tools for your version of, or your selection of operating system. So just download the one that's for your operating system. You can just click on the link, and then select that you've read and agreed to the terms and conditions, and then hit the blue download button. Once you've downloaded that, Next up, you want to download the factory image for your device. Now, on the right-hand side, you can click on the Pixel 2 XL or the Pixel 2 selection to jump down to the list uh, quicker. And you just want to download the latest one for February 2018. So click on the blue link. And of course, you'll also want to download the latest versions of TWRP, both the image and installer. Although you can probably look around the TWRP XDA thread and see if anyone's reporting issues, especially if you do this update a few days after. So for example, we would go to the Pixel 2, or the one that matches your device, and there it is, I have it on the quick access there. So what we can do is just hit up the last page, and that is usually when people start commenting, so here we are. Uh, you might need to remove the lock screen, or the screen lock I should say, and boot into TWRP again. So the February update has broken something like the decryption that allows you to access your data partition when you're in TWRP. So of course this is, uh, may not be a solution for you as this person points out that if you're using something that requires device administration, um, that does require a screen lock. So you'll need to figure that out yourself. But then last but not least, you also want to download the latest version of the Magisk installation zip just in case we do have access to TWRP. So once you've got all these uh, four to five files downloaded, I have them saved in my Android folder, just here, so it's uh, quite neat. We're going to need to start extracting a couple of things here. So let's open up the platform tool zip for our operating system. Now on Mac and Linux, you'll, you will need to run your commands a little bit differently, and I'll let you know what you have to do. But otherwise, you just need to extract, or open up the platform tools, and extract the ADB EXE and DLLs, and of course the fastboot.exe as well and also the libwinpthread-1 DLL. Drag all those five files out, and once you've done that, you can close the platform tools zip file. Next up, you'll want to open up the factory image that you've downloaded for your device. Open up the folder within it, and we're going to update the bootloader and radio as well, so drag those two images out. And then we'll also want to extract the image zip file here. We're going to be using the fastboot update command, to make sure we flash all the files there. Okay, now that that's done, let's copy a few things to our device. So you will need to grab your USB Type-C cable and plug in your phone and then enable the, or set the USB connection mode to transferring files. So once you've done that on your phone, it should pop up on your computer. If not, just hit up this PC and just go into the internal shared storage. I'm going to copy everything into the, just the, I'm just going to copy everything to the root directory. So you can see I already have my TWRP installer there. So that's fine. If you already have stuff there, you don't need to copy it. I'm going to copy over the latest version of Magisk and delete the old one just so we don't get confused. And that should be it. So you only need to copy over the Magisk installer and the TWRP installer. So let's head back to our device where we will disable our screen lock, so just go over to settings and then go over to security and location then tap on screen lock, confirm your patent pin and then just choose swipe 
and remove the device protection. Once you've done that, you can now boot your phone into the bootloader where we're going to update our phone using Fastboot and then go ahead and boot TWRP, install TWRP and then also install Magisk again. So let's do that. We're going to reboot our phone. You can leave your phone plugged in. You can see I have an exposed module here. But let's just reboot our phone normally. And I'm going to hold the volume down button as soon as our phone turns black or the restart screen freezes. So about now. Just hold the volume down button until we get into the bootloader. Alright, so once you're in the bootloader, now we can have some fun here. So we're going to go back to our computer and we're going to open up a new command prompt window or terminal window or even PowerShell window uh, in our same directory as our Android folder where all our files are. So to do that on Windows, you can hold the shift key and right click in an empty space with nothing selected. And uh, from there, you can hit up the open command window here or open PowerShell window here. I'm going to use my console emulation software instead just so I can resize text and all that, but choose whichever option you have there. Now here is where it differs slightly per operating system and I guess uh, shell. So if you're running or using the command prompt, you don't need to do anything, you can just follow exactly what I do. But if you're using the PowerShell prompt or using terminal, you need to put in a dot slash in front of the executable that you're trying to run. This is just a security feature in those shells. So if you're on PowerShell or a terminal, you will need to put a dot forward slash in front of ADB or fastboot, for example. Now let's get on with the commands, shall we? So we're going to type in fastboot devices to check that our device is connected to our computer, and it is. So once you've done that, we can go over to flashing, or sorry, updating our firmware. So we're going to update the bootloader first. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space in the end and drag in our bootloader image. Now this has uh, updated our bootloader B. So depending on which slot you are on currently, your boot slot, it will differ a little bit. But to update the other slot, all you have to do is type in fastboot flash bootloader underscore other and then drag in the bootloader image and that will flash to bootloader A or the other one. You can also manually specify this, especially if the commands don't end up working well. You can specify underscore A or underscore B. Just append that to the end of the partition. Next up, we're going to reboot back into the bootloader so we can have a look at the new bootloader. To do this, we can type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. Once you've done that, you'll need to wait for your device to boot back into the bootloader, like so. And then once you've done that, we can go ahead and update the radio image as well. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space in the end and drag in the radio image. Hit enter. Now that's going to update radio B. We're going to do the same thing, but for the other partition, the radio partition. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio underscore other. Leave a space in the end and drag in our radio image and hit enter. Now as long as everything says OK, we can now continue with updating our pretty much our, a big one, all the images there. So to do this, we're going to type in fastboot double dash no, sorry, skip dash reboot. You may, make sure you don't put dash w as well and then type in update and then drag in our image zip file. Not the factory image, but the one we extracted outside, starting with image, and then hit enter. Now that is going to extract all the images to our disks and then flash it to our device. This uh, will only update one half of the system, so the current slot that you're on, and is usually all right with that. So once this is done, it will return us to the command prompt where we can continue and flash TWRP back onto our device. Okay, now that's done, we can now go ahead and flash, or sorry, boot the TWRP image. Now to do that, we're going to type in fastboot boot, leave a space in the end and drag in the TWRP image, like so. And this is going to boot our phone into TWRP. And pretty much the rest of the steps we'll be able to do within TWRP. Okay, so our phone's in the TWRP menu now. If your phone actually asks you for a password or passcode or pattern, 
and you haven't disabled your screen lock in Android, you'll need to go back and do that, as apparently this version of the February update prevents TWRP from decrypting the data partition. So you'll need to turn off the screen lock. Now once you're in TWRP, we can now go ahead and install TWRP if you want, but you may find that you won't be able to use it once you set your screen lock back. So I guess we won't be doing it this week, but in the case you are wanting to install TWRP, I'll just show you how to do that. First up, you'll just want to tap on the TWRP installer and then swipe to confirm flash with that. Just like we did before. So this is going to install TWRP to both the A slot and B slot, so there's uh, no worries there. Once this is done, we're going to flash the Magisk zip file. And we can do that um, just currently in our booted TWRP, or we can reboot into the recovery to make sure our version or TWRP has been installed there. We won't do that, we'll just go straight to installing Magisk here, and swipe to confirm flash. Okay, now once that's done, we can just reboot our phone. I'm going to tap on Reboot System there and wait for our phone to boot all the way up. Okay, so our phone's booted. If yours doesn't actually boot up, you may want to go back into the bootloader and flash the boot image or redo these steps without booting. But as you can see, everything works out quite well. So we're back in to Android now. Let's have a look if we are still rooted. Now it looks like um, at least Magisk has been installed as we have my exposed mods working again. So let's just open up the Magisk Manager. That seems to be working just fine. I know Safety Net won't pass for me since I'm running exposed. And you can see my modules are still enabled here. So let's just have a look that we're on the February update. So let's go to the settings and not that, but go to System and then About Phone and we'll have a look at the Android security patch version. We're on the 5th of February. I'm going to zoom in. Eh? So yeah, 5th of February here. So that's it for this video, guys. You can now go back and install all your substratum overlays. And I guess we'll just have a quick look at TWRP while we're at it. And it's so now I've just added back my security or lock screen. And you can see here I require a pattern now. We're going to see, well, we should see that when we boot into TWRP, that, I'll, that it won't be able to decrypt our data partition until a new version that fixes that comes out. So if you're waiting for that, feel free to subscribe to this channel and I'll be uploading a video whenever that comes out detailing how to install it, although you'll probably know how to install it, but might as well let you know when that comes out. Or you can probably keep your eyes peeled on, I guess, the TWRP download page or the XDA thread or even on I guess some um, social media platforms, I guess. You can have a look around there. So right now when we boot into TWRP, it should ask us for a pattern, but then not be able to decrypt it, or a data partition at least. Okay, so let's enter our pattern. And you can see the pattern has failed, or doesn't work even though you saw that it worked on the lock screen when we booted into Android. So that will be a thing, and we can, you could have swiped that, but now if you tap on install, you won't be able to see anything or use anything in our SD card since everything is still encrypted. So you won't be able to use TWRP for now and um, until they release a new version that fixes that. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer those. Otherwise, you can head over to the Maldroid Discord, where I'll be more than happy to answer, I guess, questions, or if you just want to share things over there as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and as always, happy flashing.